Greetings, viewers all over the world, wherever you're watching from. And if you are joining us for the first time in this session, this is our Kingdom Fellowship for All, uh, passionately known as Kafa. And it's once in five years, uh, one of its own kind, because the last five years we did it, it was not online. But we are doing Kafa Conference online, and it's been a blessing. I want to thank God for all the speakers who have spoken before me. Powerful a word of God. The word of God is alive. And the word of God is doing wonders in our lives. I also want to thank our father, Archbishop Dr. Asa Gurupira, who is the visionary of Faith in God Ministries, and whose pulpit I am standing. Thank you so much. Um, I'm continuing with the teaching um, this day. I started um, the first day. I opened the conference. I'm running with a, a teaching I've entitled Called for Greatness. Called for Greatness. And I'm following on the story of Abraham, the great man of faith, Abraham, the great man of faith. And my teaching is coming from Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. And make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Can we just bow our heads in prayer? Father God, I want to thank you for your word. Thank you for your word which is alive. Thank you for your word which is active. Thank you for your word which is sharper than any two-edged sword. And today as I stand before your inheritance, Father, I pray that you use me only as a vessel. As you speak into our lives, your life-giving word. I want to thank you for your word, Spirit of the living God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just, so just as a recap of what we said the first day when I opened, I said God called Abraham, and he promised that he was going to make him great. It was not the promise of the blessing or greatness, uh, greatness first. It was him being instructed to leave his country, his kindred, and his family, and then go to a land which God was going to show him. And God then promises, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you a great nation. And I said, the word great, uh, when it's used, when God says, I'm going to make you a great nation, the word great in this text means to lift up. God was going to lift Abraham up. And it also means to magnify, to look big before people, magnify, and to make mighty, or someone of power, someone of strength, to make mighty. He was going to be exalted, you know, to be lifted on a high place where everyone would see him. He was going to be distinguished. It's all coming from great. He was going to be distinguished. And we can all testify that he's a distinguished man of God, Abraham, man of faith. And it also means to increase. I'm going to make you great. So all this was going to befall Abraham. God was going to make him great. He was going to magnify him. He was going to make him mighty. He was going to make him exalted, distinguished, and he was going to increase him. So there are certain principles that we learn from the life of Abraham, which I want us to follow, and they are also going to help us, even as we go under the theme, too big to be hidden, because this is the general theme of our conference, too big to be hidden. So there are certain principles that we want us to, I want us to follow that we can get from the life of Abraham and that are going to help us even in our quest to become too big to be hidden. The first one is greatness originates from God. Greatness, true greatness, sorry, true greatness originates from God. Psalm 75 verse 6, verse 6 it says, For promotion comes neither from east nor from west nor from the south, but God is the judge. He puts down one and sets up another. So true greatness, if you want to be great, true greatness comes from God or originates from God. You know, throughout history, we have read about men and women who were considered great according to human standards. We read of people like Albert Einstein, who invented the, the light bulb. We read about Isaac Newton, who was a great mathematician and physicist. And many others of great stature who did great things, but none of them he had such an impact as Abraham had. None of them. We still speak of Abraham. You know, all of us say we are, we are, we are heirs, you, you are, we are sons of Abraham by faith. None of them had such impact as Abraham. He's considered, like I said the first time, 
as the father of faith in Judaism, is father of faith, Christianity, father of faith, even Islam, father of faith. So we might disagree in certain things, but you all agree that Abraham became the father of faith. So we who are born again, we claim that we are children of Abraham, and you all claim the blessing of Abraham. He had such impact. So I'm saying true promotion or true greatness, if you want to be great, real greatness, which does not go down and come up, it comes from God. You might fight it your own way to become great and fight to be educated and fight maybe to possess wealth and even go into debt. You can fight to become great, maybe post your pictures all over today. Now we have social media, put posters, you know, on, on social media, on Facebook and claim to be great. All that in human eyes might be great, but you know what? It goes up. It's not permanent. There are many people we considered so great in our lives. Even when we were growing up, they had amassed wealth. They looked so rich. They were well known. But look at you today. Even their children are paupers. Their own children, biological children. But we say we are Father Abraham's children. And we are blessed by the blessing of Abraham. Their own biological children have nothing. Because it's, it's um, wealth gained, you know, by our own muscle, our own physique. But what do I advise you as a child of God? Surrender yourself to God. Whatever you do, do it with God guiding you. Do it under his covering, under his guidance. Be it education under God's guidance. Be it wealth-wise, working at work, promotions. Let it come from God. Don't detach yourself from God's guidance. Because your greatness might come, but temporarily. I'm saying we have many people who are so great in our own eyes. Some of them died poor. And yet at one time they were so great. So if you want true greatness, true greatness comes from God. He's the one who promotes people. He's the one who gives permanent promotion. I always say, you come to God the way you are, but when God raises up to a certain level, if it's God, it's permanent. Yeah. You don't go back to the level where you were. Yeah. So if you came to Jesus, like here where I am in this country, in, in my own nation, there are some who come to Jesus with no shoes at all. They come to Jesus like that. No change clothes. They come to Jesus like that. But if they love the Lord, and then the Lord raises them yeah. to come to a level where they now have a pair of shoes, and maybe a bicycle. I tell you, you'll never see them again walking with no shoes. They've gone to a certain level where they don't go back again. So when God raises, it's a sure level of raising when God raises people. So promotion, true promotion comes from God. Hallelujah. He is in the business of promoting people. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 8 says, he raises up the poor. I spoke about this the first time I was speaking here. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. So true pro promotion comes from God. God promised Abraham, I'll make you great. I'll make you great. And when God is set to make you great, nothing can stand in his way. You'll be great and great in he, indeed. So he prom his promises are true. His promises are true. So true greatness comes from God. I, I urge you by the message of God, don't do it your own way. It becomes temporary. But when God raises you to a certain level and you continue loving the Lord, you know you are there and you are there for sure. It's from glory to glory. So he raises you up. So true greatness, you want it. Have a relationship, be in the Lord. Whatever it is, don't go away from your God. Be in the Lord and you are going to experience it. A line upon line, precept upon precept. It might not be in a hurry. It might not be, you know, overnight. For some people, it's divine acceleration. But for some people, it's slowly. Line upon line, depending on how we cooperate with the word, depending on how we are growing in the Lord. But once you get to a certain level, it's a sure level. Yeah. Once you get to a certain level, it's a sure level. Yeah. Once you get to a point where you are working on foot and now you are driving and it has come in the Lord, it's a sure level. It's a sure. And you can guarantee and say, I've moved away from walking on foot. I've moved away from the statistics of pedestrians. I'm among those who drive. You can shout it with confidence if it's in the Lord. 
But if you do it your own way, you can have 10, 20 cars there. The next thing we see you walking on foot. It's not in the Lord. So true greatness comes from God. So God said to Abraham, I'm going to make you great. And from that time on, we see him on the root or path of greatness. Yeah. We see him on the path of greatness. Mighty. He had 300 men who went to, you know, to deliver a lot. On their own, 300 mighty men of, of, from his servants. And they did it. Mighty men. He was so blessed he would not get anything. You know, uh, because he was, he was blessed. Wherever he went, even where he lied to people, that Sarah is my sister. Uh, they blessed, they actually blessed and gave him gold, gave him servants, gave him things and said, go. You actually attract blessings if the blessing is of the Lord. So promotion does not come from east to west. No promotion comes from the Lord. I don't want you to tie yourself and work yourself so much that you detach yourself from serving God, detach yourself from reading the word because you are busy, detach yourself even from prayer because you are busy. You work and accumulate things that will fall down. But do it in the Lord, because he's the one who gives promotion. Hallelujah. So true promotion comes from God. I'm just saying we are learning from the life of Abraham. When he started following God, we see him on a path of promotion. And we see God promoting him. And continuously becoming richer and richer and richer. And it was not just him, but even his biological children. Isaac, we talk of Isaac. He became so blessed. Genesis 26 says the man became rich. He became to prosper. And became prosperous. And continues to prosper. And until he became very, very prosperous. It continued even in the biological children. But also in, in us, his spiritual children. So true greatness comes from the Lord. We are talking of too big to be hidden. No other way can you become too big to be hidden. Lest we fool ourselves. No other way. It comes from God. Number two. God is a relational God. He seeks a relationship so as to bring you to greatness. God is a relational God. He seeks a relationship so as to bring you to greatness. Genesis 15 verse 7. Genesis 15 verse 7. And he said to him, I am the Lord that brought you out of a of the Chaldees to give you this land to inherit it. We go on to Genesis 17, verses 1 and 2. Genesis 17, 1 and 2. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, that's 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I'm the almighty God. Walk before me and be perfect. I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. So when God called Abraham, he was not just going to be with him for moments and then leave him. Be with him for seasons and then leave him. It was going to be a relationship, a lifetime relationship. Abraham had to walk before God in order to have that, and walking before God, not for some seasons, but all the days of his life, so that the covenant that God made would be accomplished, and so that God will bless him. He said, I will bless you exceedingly or I'll multiply you exceedingly. So God is a God of relationship. We want to be great before God. You don't go to him in seasons like what some of us used to do. I used to go to God seriously when things are bad. Yeah. When things are bad, I know God would say, if the way she's serious, there's something very wrong. When things are okay, yeah, it's so, so. Even going to church, it's when time permits. Even serving God, it's when resources permit. But when things were bad, that's when I would fast. You know, you see me fasting. That's when I would be serious. I would go to church early. That's when I would be close to the man of God and phone him when things are bad. But we don't serve God like that. You want to be too big to be hidden. He is a God of relationship. I mean, he just wants to be with you. He says, Abraham, walk before me. So we don't worship God because we want something from him. We worship him, worship him because he is God. He's our father. We love him. So we worship him when things are okay. We worship him even when we are going through pressure, are going through difficult situations. We worship him when we are in plenty. And we worship him sometimes when we, when we are lack. Because we don't worship him for things. 
We worship God because he is God. He's a relational God. He wants to be in your family all the time. You know, sometimes when you fight with your wife, you fight with your relative. Remember, God is there. He's a relational God. He's not God who comes in seasons. He's not God who comes maybe during time of prayer. And now let's pray and God is coming. No, he's always there. So he says to Abraham, walk before me. And even as they were, the children of Israel, Israel, as they were coming from Egypt, going to Canaan, he says to them, we hear that he would lead them by a pillar of cloud, by a cloud by day, and then fire by night. But he came to a time where he said, no, I want to dwell among you. Build for me, build for me a tabernacle and make a place, the hall of holies, so that I can put the ark of the covenant there, so that I can dwell in them. He is a God of relationship. He's a relational God. Exodus 25. Let me just read it. Exodus 25, verses 8 to 9. He says, And let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show you, after the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it, that I may dwell among you, so in the Old Testament, he was limited to dwelling among. But now he wants to dwell in you. He is among us and in us. He's a relational God. He seeks a relationship. He wants to be in your home. He wants to be in your workplace. He wants to, be, we know that God is everywhere. But he's manifesting, you allow it, you know, by acknowledging. But sometimes we ignore God. And yet he wants a relationship. Even when we are at work, when we were in our homes, you know, in the community, he is seeking a relationship from us. You. you want to be great. You want to be too big to be hidden. God is a relational God. He wants a relationship. So we worship him. We worship him. When we come to church, we are serving. We are not serving so that people see us. No, we are serving because we love God. When we come, we give to God. We are not giving so that we get something in return, good measure pressed down. Yes, that's bonus. But we are serving, we are giving because we love him. We are in a relationship with God. And we don't just worship him when others are watching. We don't just worship him in, in, in church. No, it's our lifestyle. Because we are in a relationship. So we are consciously aware of his presence because we are in a relationship. He's a relational God. He says, Abraham, walk before me. So he was not with Abraham sometimes. From the time Abraham said, I believe, I will go. God was with him all the time. And even his enemies, the Philistines and those, they knew that he's a blessed man. His God is with him. And his God is different from our gods. They knew it. So God is a relational God. John 15, 16. He says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you shall ask of thy father in my name, he might give it to you. Jesus Christ talking to his disciples and talking to us today. He says, it's not you who chose me, but I've chosen you. So you, that relationship, you know, must continuously be fanned. You have been chosen, you are so special. You have been chosen by the King of Kings, by the Lord of Lords. That relationship is so special and it must be found by you. He says, I did not, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And he chose us that you might go and bear fruit. You know, this relationship, it's a fruitful relationship. Read all over the Bible, we're reading in the Old Testament, it's about fruitfulness. Now we are in the New Testament, it's about fruitfulness. The relationship is about fruitfulness. He says, I, I chose you so that you might go and bear fruit. And fruit which remains. It's a relationship of fruitfulness. So, he is seeking a relationship. Through this relationship, fruitfulness is guaranteed. Through this relationship, abundance is guaranteed. Through this relationship, life is guaranteed. He says, a thief, the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come that you might have life and have it abundantly. We're talking of greatness when you talk of abundant life. We're talking of being too big to be hidden when you talk of abundance. And through this relationship, greatness is guaranteed. It's guaranteed. It's not you who chose him. No, he chose you. It was not Abraham who chose 
No, he came to him. The word says, now God had said to Abraham. It's not Abraham who went about looking for him. No, God came to Abraham and he said to him. So even in the New Testament, Jesus is saying, it's not you who chose me, but I chose you. What a, what a, what, what a privilege. What a privilege that you have as children of God. He chose us that we might go and bear fruit. Not just ordinary fruit or seasonal fruit, but the fruit which remains. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are saying, true greatness comes from God. And this God is a relational God. We don't just go to him when we are asking to become great. God also make me great. Oh, God heal me. This must come as benefits. Benefits, benefits of our relationship. He has chosen us so that you'll be fruitful. So healing will come as a benefit. You know, whatever we want will come as benefits of the relationship. We don't just go to God when we are asking for things. No. Relationship. And you know, our father always teaches us that someone who is in a relationship who will not need to cry and cast dust and fast for something. It's a word. You're speaking to your father. It's a relationship. It's a word you're speaking to your father, and your father hears you. So in this season, where we are saying too big to be hidden, your relationship with God really matters. Where do you stand? What's your relationship with God like? It's a time where we have to seek God like never before. Worship him. Serve him. You know, we've been told that this season, let's not get away with two things. Fellowship and service. Fellowship and service. Fellowship with one another and fellowship with God as we serve him. Fellowship and service. He is seeking a relationship. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is a relational God. Number three. Number three. We are talking about code for greatness. Faith in God triggered the greatness in Abraham. I spoke about that the first night I was teaching. Faith in God triggered the greatness in Abraham. We are learning some things that led to the greatness that's in Abraham. His faith in God triggered the greatness in Abraham. Romans 4 verse 3. Romans 4 verse 3 it says, For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He believed God. I dwelt very much on this one. That he just believed God. So faith in God triggered greatness in Abraham. It all started on a platform of faith, in other words. It all, the greatness that we see in Abraham, it all started on a platform of faith. I'm not going to dwell on that because I touched that a lot on our first night. Okay, number four. Greatness in Abraham was sealed with a test. The greatness in Abraham was sealed with a test. And we have to understand this. Otherwise, as children of God, as we are moving, we might deceive ourselves and say everything is going to be milk and honey. Mm. But the greatness of Abraham was sealed by a test. Mm. Let me tell you, child of God, you are going to be tempted along the way. Mm. The devil will bring it as temptation. His desire is for him to fall so that you leave God. But God will use the temptations of the devil as our own test. That's why the word says, he does not allow a temptation which is too big for you to befall you. Any temptation that the devil might want to give you is first saved by God to see if it's your size. If it's too big, I believe God will hinder it. It won't come. Anything allowed by God, it means you are able to come out. And the word says, he also produces a way out of every temptation that comes. So the devil is going to bring temptations to you. But God is also going to use the temptations as tests so that you are graduated to a higher level. So when, when temptations come, well, when we're taught by our father, he was saying temptations are like an exam. They're like an exam. There's no way you can go to college when you have not first passed the lower grades. So how do you pass the lower grades? You are given a test. And you have to pass the test in order for you to qualify for a higher grade. So the greatness of Abraham was sealed with a test. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. For those who read their Bibles, Abraham had gone for years. He was now, he was initially Abraham, exalted father. 
and his name was changed, like God is fond of changing names. His name was changed, became Abraham, father of many nations. But father of many nations looked barren, no child up to 90 years. He had no child. And then God had his prayer, God gave him a child. Now it's the only child that he has, apart from one he had with a concubine, Ishmael. The only child he has, God now comes with a test. Because he, want, he wants to seal the greatness. He wants to seal that relationship, that greatness. He wants to seal the covenant and the promise. He then comes in chapter 22 with a test. Genesis 22 verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt some Bible say test Abraham because God will test the devil tempt and said to him Abraham and he said behold here I am and he said take now your son your only son Isaac whom you love and get into the land of Moriah and offer him here for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell you so he's got just one child and God is coming to him the same God he believed in when he was in air of the Chaldeans. This same God is coming back to him. And he says, I want you to go and get your child. The only one, the one you love. Not Ishmael, but the one you love. I want you to get him. Go to Moria and offer him as a sacrifice. God tested Abraham. But this was going to be the seal of the covenant that God had made with him. And I want to thank God for this great man of God. He said, I'll do it. I'll do it. If God has given me and is asking of it, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm going, I'm going to give him and I'm going to. And he purposed in his heart that I'm going to kill the child. Yeah. Because the word says he died. And even the child asked and said, everything we have. But where is the lamp for the sacrifice? That God knows. And that was his attitude. God knows. He knows he's going to give it. God knows. Until he got his child on the altar and was about to kill. But God said, now I know. That's when God sealed the covenant. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 16 to 17. Genesis 22, 16 to 17, it says, And said, by myself I have sworn. You know, when people swear, it's something great and changeable. But God looked for something to swear with and found nothing. And he said, by myself I have sworn. He swore by himself. And that's unchangeable. That's something feels, fixed, something which is not going to change. He said, I have sown, says the Lord, for because you have done this thing and has not withheld your son, your only son, that in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply. I will multiply. Your seed, I will multiply your seed as the star, as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and your seed shall possess the gate of the enemies. So God swore by himself, but after a test. I tell you this walk of greatness, we are going to come across lots of temptations. And if you are not in a relationship with God, the devil will take you. Let me tell you something about the temptations. The devil will never tempt you with something which you, are, you cannot lure with. A temptation is like a bait. So if you are someone who loves money, he's going to tempt you with money. That's the bait he's going to use. If you are someone who loves women or girls, he's going to use that as a bait. If you are someone who loves, I don't know, we are great, he's just going to use what you love to tempt you. And during this time, when we are crying that God, which is a season where we are too big to be hidden. The devil is also coming with his own things. He wants to tempt you so that you move away from God. He wants to tempt you so that you, you, you don't win what God has in store for you. But your relationship with God is going to help you. Your relationship. Abraham had such a relationship with God that he believed in him. He said, whatever God says I'm going to do. We saw it when he moved from of, of the Chaldeans. He moved and yet he did not know God. And he moved. And why he did not know? Until he started seeing God doing things in his life. And now God says, go and sacrifice your own son. He says, the same I'm going to do. I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. And this sealed the blessing. This sealed the covenant. When he said, yes. So temptations are going to come. But worry not, don't cry. Continue in a relationship with God. 
There will come God who will always give you a way out of every temptation that come. And guess what? Many times when things have pressurized me, the Lord has been so faithful to me. I go back to Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to those who love the Lord, those who are called according to his purposes. When you're passing through difficult times during this time, don't think that God has le left you. Don't think that God has forsaken you. No. I want you to look for something good within what's happened, within the same situation. If you can't see it, still say, God, I thank you for your word is true. I know something good is going to come out of this and surely you are going to see it. We have seen it in our life situations where me and my husband thought this is the greatest temptation. Where you are tempted to think God has forsaken me. I remember the other time asking my husband as we were driving. I said, is it, are we ever going to have a time where we are just quiet and we are not worried about something? Are we ever going to have such time? Things were under pressure from left, center, right. But I want to thank God. When you think that all things work together for good, it's going to help you not to be bitter with people. Because sometimes people are used to bring the pressures. But guess what? Those pressures are going to raise you to a higher level. If you look for the good in a situation, or you continue to say, God, I know all things work for good. I know something good is going to come out of this. I know. Abraham might not have heard of this verse because it's in the New Testament. But I know inside of him, he was saying something good is going to come out of this. I don't think God will just kill my only child, he promised. And just kill him like that and leave me. I know this God. Something good is going to come out of this killing. Something good is going to come out. And I'm going to urge you, child of God, when we say too big to be hidden, I'm not saying it's going to come on a silver platter. Some of us, depending on how great you are going to be, the things that are going to come your way are also going to be deeper and heavier. Depending on how great you are. Because you are saying too big. If you are going to become a professor, your exam or dissertation is not like someone who is going to have a first degree. I'm not yet a professor, but I know it's different. When you have a first degree and you want to become a, you know, you want to do master's degree, your dissertation is not going to be the same as that. So depending on how great you are going to be, because God is going to raise us differently. Depending, God is going to demand some things from us, some very dear things, depending on how great we are going to be raised. So we are saying too big to be hidden, but get ready for the exam. Get ready for the exam that's going to catapult you to a position of exaltation, a position of being mighty, a position of being great. It's not just going to come when you're just laughing and smiling. Some tests and exams are going to come our way to qualify that greatness. So for Abraham, it was his only son. You know, it was going to be better if they'd said maybe Ishmael. He would say the son of promises. But he said, the only one, the one you love, that one is the one I want. So for some of us, it's going to be something, something, something that you have hold on dear. And God wants to catapult you. And he says, I want that. Give it to me. I want that. It's obedience. Hallelujah. It's obedience. When Abraham said yes, inside of his heart, he had killed Isaac. But he came back with Isaac. Inside of his heart, he had killed. But he came back. He went down the mountain with Isaac. So it's going to take tests and temptations for us to be qualified to become too big to be hidden. We are not just going to become too big while seated. Temptations are going to come our way. And God is going to use those temptations as tests to bring us higher. I'm just saying when you are passing through that difficult time, just remember... All things work together for good. Even if you can't see it that time, know it's coming. I'm, I want you to put a smile on your face and say, God, I can't see the good that's going to come out of this. But I know you don't lie. I know your word is true. I will see it in due season. But help me to endure. Help me to pass this test so that I'll be able to see. So many things, so many things. I said, you went through a lot with my husband. So many. And even faith in God ministries was born from pressure. If we had yielded to that pressure, we we're going to sin against God. We we're going to come out with bitterness. But because we knew that there's something good, although we could not see it, we did not allow bitterness to come in our hearts. And now we are enjoying 
We are enjoying as we see God, you know, raise leaders in faith in God ministries as we see souls coming to the Lord. Oh, because of just one simple thing that God did in our lives and we continue to hold him on. So God will come to you, you know, to, to authenticate that greatness. He's going to come with a test. Get ready for a test. And I'm saying, the greater are going to become, the bigger the test. Yeah, because it's not the same. The bigger you are going to be, because you are saying too big to be hidden. The bigger you are, you, are, you are going to become, the greater the test. It's just unfortunate that sometimes when we see people, men of God and women of God, we see great men and women of God. They never tell us what they go through to become that. And sometimes we become so inspired. And we say, oh, so if only I could be like so-and-so. If only I could be like so-and-so. But the other side of the test, we don't know. So tests are coming our way. Even as we are preparing to be too big. But be rest assured that nothing too big for you will be allowed by God. He's only going to give you something which you can pass through. And as he gives you, he also gives you a way out. You come out rejoicing. You come out celebrating. So God... Greatness in Abraham was sealed with a test. And it was his son. God said, I want your son. I want your son. Amen. And I would want to say for me, you know, coming from a very poor family, for me, my job was very dear to me. I loved my job. I saw it as a solution to all our problems, a solution to all the problems that we had gone through as a family, the problems of finances, the problems of lacking food on the table. I said, now I'm working. Everything now will be well. I'm going to build for my parents. We are going to have good food now. But you love the Lord, you are in a relationship. He says, I want that job. And he started with my husband. He did not start with me. Because he had a better, a better earning job than me. He started with my husband. I want that job. I cried. I cried. I loved the Lord, but I could not let go of that job. I cried myself until my husband said, I'm no longer going for full-time ministry. I wait for you. When God speaks to you, then I'll leave the job. I cried. Some of the things that God will demand when he wants to make you great, I mean, they'll be so dear to you. So dear to you, and in a conference, a certain conference, God spoke to me. Still a small voice, it was not audible, that as he was standing there, I just stayed inside of me. He has to leave that job. And it was me then, a year later, to go to him and say, please go and resign without a notice. And that job, we gave it away. Now we're left with my job as the only source of income. And it did not take even six months. God started talking to me, you have to leave that job. I also want you to leave that job. I want you to leave that job. Imagine! And all the families, no one was earning anything substantial. They were all looking up to us. And I did the same. My husband, God is saying, he wants that job. We have to give it away. As God prepares you for greatness. Now I look back in my life and say, if I had not obeyed and left that job in 1995, where would I be? Where would I be? Where would I be? Would I have impacted so many souls like I have done today? Yeah. Would I have even possessed anything of the things that I have in my own power today? Would I have even managed to support even the extended family I was crying for the way I've done today? But God says, give me. So I'm saying some of the things will be so dear to you. Our jobs were so dear to us. But as God was developing greatness, and I, I know he's continuing developing greatness in us, first level of greatness, give me that jobs, leave them. And it was not easy. It was not easy. So God will come to test you. He will come to test you. And I'm saying some of the things that he will demand are things that are so dear to you, so dear to you, so dear to you. But just learn to say yes. And from there, we're learning from Abraham obedience is going to be key. Obedience is going to be key. I said, what is going to test? To seal, he's going to test. And to Abraham, he said, now I know. And with blessing, I'm going to bless you. And at one stage, God is going to say that to you. Now I know. And you want it done in your life. It must be your prayer that God, one of these days, not only once, I want it to continuously be done. And now I know. Now I know. 
Not only about Abraham, but also about my life. Lord, I also want this confession from you that now I know. Now I know. And talking about me and not about Abraham. And I'm saying this brings me to obedience. Obedience. He obeyed God. He obeyed God. Obedience is going to be key in this season. As we are walking in a relationship with God. Relationship with God is going to say some things. Obedience is going to be key. In the Old Testament, he says to so. Samuel saying to Saul, obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is going to be key. There's this saying, which our father always tells us, don't fight with sacrifice, to, you know, to cover up with sacrifice what you have lost through disobedience. Don't fight to cover up with sacrifice what you have lost through disobedience. That God tells you, do this, I want to make you great. Then you go and make lots of sacrifices. This I can't give you, Lord, but I'm going to sacrifice this. God just seeks for obedience. As we are walking and seeking God, and we are saying too big to be hidden, God is going to take us to that level where you are too big to be hidden, but only when you walk in obedience. This season is calling for a lot of obedience. Obedience, he says, it's better than sacrifice. Obedience. If God says, in faith in God ministries, we do Operation Nehemiah. If God says, it's Operation Nehemiah, I want you to sell this car and put it for Operation Nehemiah so that I bless you. You don't sacrifice by going in the rural areas, deep, deep for two weeks, praying and fasting and preaching to lost souls. He wants this first, and then you go and do that. So obedience, obedience, obedience. He is going to speak to us in a language. You know the good thing about God? He doesn't to speak to you in a language you don't understand. Yeah. I was coming from a mainline church, and I didn't know about audible voices. I didn't know, but I understood him. When he speaks, you understand. He speaks with a language that you understand. I did not know a lot of things, but when he said this job, leave it. I understood mm. that he wants me to leave this job. I did not understand the language, but when he said, I want you to go to Bible school so you understand better. I understood it. Oh, in my own, although I was not very mature, God is fair. He will speak in a language you understand. Lest you say, I might not understand. He will speak in, a, and it's good languages for every one of us. When he speaks, you understand. It's you who will fight in your heart. And actually, you hear your heart won't be settled. You'll be going around asking many people, what about this, what about this? When you hear yourself doing that, asking many people about an opinion, God has spoken. And you're just trying to cover up in disobedience by getting opinions of people. Wow. He said, this is not God is going to speak. And he's such a good God, such a loving God. He will speak in a language that you understand. When he asks you to do something, don't question him. Don't reason. Just go and obey. Obey. And he's going to raise you. Obey. And he's not going to ask you something which is off your level. He's not like that. He's such a loving God. He will ask you something which you are able to do. When you see him ask, he knows you are well able to do that. Just continue doing it. And you are going to see how he's going to raise you. He's going to call for obedience. When he speaks, don't go for second opinion. Don't go even to your friend. Don't go. Well, Pastor, I've heard this. I don't, don't go for second opinion. You can actually say God confirm, and he's going to confirm. He's going to confirm. When he told me, get out of your job, I knew it was God who had spoken. And a confirmation came from my senior pastor who was working at that time. He is my senior. He is working. He's actually a manager. And he comes to me. We just meet in our and he says, Big group, where are you coming from? He said, coming from, you are still working. Go and resign. I'm saying, he is working. He is driving a company vehicle. And he's coming to me. Say, you're still going to work. Go and resign. Confirmation. And he said, of me, it ticked exactly what God was saying. This was just a confirmation. So God is going to speak to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is going to speak to you. And don't even worry yourself and say, how does God speak? How do I hear God? He uses a language you understand. He's going to speak to you. So he's calling for obedience. 
Just like he spoke to Abraham, who was in idol worshiping, and he spoke in a language that he understood that this is true and I have to follow him. He came again to Abraham and said, go and sacrifice your son. In a language he understood. He's going to do the same to you. He's going to speak to you. Don't worry about guidance. He's going to guide you and in a language that you understand. God is seeking obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. He's seeking obedience in this season. Just obey God. Obey God. Line up online and say some of the things you might not understand today. But just go in obedience. I don't understand. And I know Abraham, at one st stage you would not understand. I don't understand how God can give me a son. And then says, go and kill a son. But anyway, because you have said it, God, I'm going to do it. This should be the attitude that we have. Sometimes you might not understand. God has positioned you in an area. God has positioned you in a city. And you are flourishing in that city. People are coming to the Lord. Maybe you are a pastor and the church is growing. And then from nowhere, God comes and says, I want you to leave this city. You are going there. And there's nothing there. There's nothing and you never dreamt of going there. Just obey God. Hallelujah. Just walk in obedience. I've got testimonies of children who are leading, leading, pastors who are leading, who are the flourishing churches. I mean, things were starting to happen. You know, parishioners supporting them, parishioners renting good houses for them, even to planning to buy cars for them. Things that we're praying for, even as they are seniors. God, we are praying that you bless these children. They are working so hard. Bless them, Father. And we see God starts answering prayer. The prayer is being answered from nowhere. God comes. In a language you understand. Leave this. Go to a land, I will show you. When there is no one, no parishioner, no relative, no one. Sometimes you fail to understand. How can the same God, we have been praying that you bless. Now we are seeing answers to prayer. And you are coming again. We have the answers and you are coming and say, go there. It's just steps towards greatness. Steps towards greatness. If those children were to give their testimonies, you would see how great they are. They would not achieve that greatness, no matter how much we prayed in the areas where they were. The level of greatness that God wanted to give them needed a bigger space, bigger place, but it was a new place with no parishion. So some of the things we are not going to understand, whether you're a pastor, a child who has just given the, the life to the Lord, or someone, a minister, an elder, some of the things that God is going to tell you, you fail to understand. God, I've been praying for this. I've been fasting for this. Could it be you, God? Because this looks like it's an answer to my prayers. But you say, give me. Isaac is an answer to prayer. Imagine 90 years, no child, an answer to prayer. And God says, go and sacrifice it. So as we are talking about too big to be hidden, we need to understand this. Some of the things that God is going to ask from us as he expands our territories, as he enlarge our, enlarge our minds, as he enlarge the possessions that we have, some of the things we won't understand. We won't understand. So it's, this season is seeking for obedience. Obe just obey God, I said, don't go for second opinion all over. Be still. When it comes and you're a bit confused, just be still. In your relationship with God, just be still. He's going to confirm in his own way. He's going to come in his own way until you are so sure this is God. Isaac, let's go. It's not going to be simple. But I tell you, it's going to catapult you to greatness greatness until God says now I know and I swear by own, my own name with the blessing I'll bless you and multiplication I'm going to multiply you coming from obedience glory to God Amen. hallelujah Amen. too big to be hidden too big to be hidden God is surely going to raise us but it's going to take obedience he is going to speak to you, and it's a language that you understand. You understand that this is God. Just obey, and he's going to catapult you. He's going to swear by his own name. With the blessing, surely I'll bless you, and I'll multiply you, and your descendants shall be like the sand of the sea. 
I will bless you. We saw it in our father Abraham and it's still living in us. It's the season where we are saying is the season of breakfast. And we are going to a level where we are too big to be hidden. If only God would help us just get these principles from Abraham's life. Nothing is too difficult with God. He can do it for me. He can do it for, for you. He has promised. And he says, is there anything too hard for me? Nothing impossible. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, I want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this season that you are passing through. Father, we come to understand that spirit of the living God, we need your help. We need, we greatly need you to stay in a strong relationship with our Father. We greatly need you, spirit of the living God, to understand when God speaks some of the things that are contrary to what we believe. Help us, spirit of the living God, to understand. And above all, that we walk in obedience. We want to thank you for greatness. Yes, greatness is hovering. Greatness is ready for us. Greatness is awaiting as long as we walk in obedience. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking into our lives. And thank you for guiding us to greatness. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We can give a clap offering to the Lord wherever you are. God bless you so much. Don't go away. We still have more preachers coming in to speak into our lives. God bless you as we continue. Too big to be hidden. Amen. Amen.